nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the John DeVito Show. I am back after a bit of an absence. So sit back and chill and enjoy the show. All right, everybody, welcome to the John DeVito Show. It is Friday, and I've been off for like, I don't know, a week and a half or whatever it's been. Just been kind of chilling, getting some things done. My life is an absolute train wreck right now. We are literally renovating all three bathrooms in our house. So where I do my podcast is in my office, which is right next to one of the bathrooms. So they're in there hammering and making all kinds of noise. So I haven't been able to... uh, get on and actually do the podcast because of noise constraints and things like that. But things are good, man. So hopefully everyone is doing well. Mr. I see you coming in. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Eric, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, Feel free to call in whenever you want, Eric. I'd love to hear from you. But, uh, you know, things here have been going well. The weather in New England has been beautiful, absolutely beautiful weather. Again, today we're looking, you know, low to mid-70s. This has been, without a doubt, one of the nicest springs I remember in Massachusetts in literally like the last 10 years. I mean, a lot of times here in New England, we'll get snow through March. We got zero snow in the month of March. Um, I've had the convertible out a couple of times. Uh, April has been beautiful. Uh, Tomorrow, super excited. My son Ethan's first baseball games of the season tomorrow. So he's got a doubleheader tomorrow, and it's going to be, I think, somewhere around 75 degrees again tomorrow. So this is the weather we live for in New England. So it has been just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful weather. And uh, I think that's been affecting me getting on the air also. I've been outside doing a lot of stuff and keeping busy. So I've got my buddy Eric calling in. I'm going to take his phone call. Eric, how are you doing, buddy? How are things going? Good morning. Happy TGIF, everybody. Um, Glad to have you back. Ah, It's good to be back. Now, i got to ask you, I've been off for over a week. What have I been missing? I'm sure there's a lot going on. So kind of update. Well, um, I think Cummings, uh, you know, our friend, your friend will hopefully he'll probably be join, joining this live cast soon. I mean, he's done some really kick-ass shows this week. Yeah. Um, now, what, like what the interview you... with Gene Ho and then addressing the, the John Merrill controversy out of Alabama. But next week, um, he's got that big interview with Juanita Broderick. That and that's going to also be followed by, of course, the slightly serious show doing um, – the free think institutes like second visit nice no those are huge interviews i mean cummings had texted me and told me he got mm-hmm. he i mean that is a huge interview and uh, hopefully she'll answer some of the questions because i mean he could really ask her some good questions about what happened with her and bill clinton and all those type of things mm-hmm. so good for him i mean he has a good show and i'm really happy he scored that interview and that's one i've got to make sure i don't miss because i get busy with all the stuff going on in my life but uh that's I'm very happy for him. That's a huge interview. I can't wait to hear that one myself. Now, tell us a little bit more about Slightly's interview coming up. So what's he got going on? Well, I think um, we've had the Free Think Institute members on back on November 30th of last year. Um, you know, Monday, this is going to be their second visit. Um, but but we'll have two additional Free Think members, you know, jo- joining in. Um, but you have Ray Bell and Jim Dwyer and Dave Largo returning and I presume Arch Kennedy may be able to make it despite taking a little bit of time off to deal with some like personal issues that he's had to deal with recently. But Peter Hartados and um, Dustin Freeland are two additional members that, that the podcast audience is finally going to get to meet. Right. I'll tell you, man, that's good. Good to hear. I mean, slightly, obviously a great show as well. And it's good to hear that they're both setting up. Well, and in case you also missed it or anybody missed missed it, it, um, Haps.tv decided to ban slightly because they were really butthurt and offended by him doing a show on the um, the COVID passport cards. Now explain that to me because I saw that on Twitter. What happened there? Um, hey, Tron, they, they, hey, they, 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 you know, they, they, they're, they're wanting to cry that, 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 that slightly was, was promoting unlawful activity, which 
that that could not be further from the truth. I, I think you. he was basically reporting it in the context of news of how easy it is people can can create counterfeit passport cards. Well, and you, you know who came after me? I don't know if you saw this, and this had nothing to do with my break. I've just been busy. We got a lot going on in our lives, so nothing personal on my end. But I actually had, if you know Alpha Mike, he used to come into this show quite a bit back in the day, and I haven't seen him in quite some time. On Twitter, I posted that joke like a couple of weeks ago where I saw like the white privilege card, and I posted that completely as a joke. I thought it was funny. You know, people carried around their white privilege card. I mean, it was completely meant to be funny. There was nothing behind it. And all of a sudden, he starts ripping me, calling me a racist and all this stuff. And before I could even respond to be like, buddy, I'm just kidding. I thought it was funny. He blocked me. So Alpha Mike just Well, decided- he's blocked me twice on there. I don't know, you know. <laughs> You know what, what? What's gotten into him? I mean, I, I don't even know if him and Ralph are even still talking. That's too bad. Now, let me ask you about that. Hey, Tron, can I, I, I wonder if the I wonder if the people over that that network that must not not be named have like gotten to him or something. You have to wonder. I don't know. But I mean, he, it was out of nowhere. I mean, because you know me, a lot of the stuff I post on Twitter, a lot of times I'm joking. I'm just being a, a jackass. I'm looking to get a rise out of somebody. And apparently he just saw what I wrote and did not like that. I mean, I, I don't think white privilege exists at all. That was kind of my point of posting that. It was just stupid. It was funny. And oh, my God, he starts calling me a racist. I think he thought that I actually believed that was the truth. So I felt kind of bad. But he didn't give me the chance to respond to it before I tried to even write him. He like blocked me. So I couldn't get to him. So oh, nothing like a little pod bean drama, you know, <laughs> to kind of keep keep things going. It's always present. Jess Doc, welcome to the show. Yes, everybody. I am still alive. I am here. I'm alive and well. Been busy with all kinds of stuff. Work has been super busy. Uh, been doing a lot of stuff just outdoors with the kids, you know, baseball, all that stuff going on. We're renovating our bathrooms in our house, which has been an absolute pain in the ass nightmare. So I'm not really enjoying that too much. I'm not handy at all. So we bring in people to renovate our bathrooms. And it's funny, we know nothing. Hey, Cummings, we were just talking about you, man. And I'd like to get you to call in, Cummings, if you're available. I want to hear about the Juanita Broderick interview. I'm sorry I've missed everything this past week. I've just been off Podbean, just completely swamped with life over the last week. But I wanted to come on and just uh, do a quick show to let everybody know I'm still alive and kicking, and hopefully I'll get back to a normal schedule sometime soon. But, I mean, I'm sure all of you guys know. I mean, that interview that Cummings landed is huge. I mean, I, a while back, wrote one idea broad, one idea broad break, and she never wrote me back. But for Cummings to get that interview, I mean, that is going to be an amazing interview. I can't wait to tune into that one and hear him uh, kind of grill the woman that has got the real dirt on uh, Slick Willie Clinton. And we all know what he did. And, uh, of course, you know, the, he's, he's not held to the fire at all. So here's Cummings. Good. I'm glad he's calling in because I want to hear all about this. Hey, man, welcome to the show. How are you? What's going on, brother? Not too mind. Hey, congratulations, dude. That's a friggin' huge interview. How'd you uh, get it? And tell me about it. Oh, uh, I sent her an email. Yes, <laughs> and she wrote back. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, she, she, uh, she silenced me, so I guess she didn't like the John DeVito show. I tried her. I wrote Tara Reid. She didn't write back. It must be that Southern charm, man. You know, I don't know if she saw the beard and just kind of figured this is my type of guy, but, you know, she, she got back to you. That's just awesome. No, I mean, Tara Reed turned me down, too. Like, she flat out told me no. Did she really? Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you would think that probably the Tara Reeds, and you would think even one Juanita Broderick, I mean, I could see them going on like a Joe Rogan show or something like that. I mean, you and I have good shows, but we don't have the type of listenership that someone like that has. But uh, that's awesome that she's coming on your show. And now let me ask you, are you going to ask her all the hard questions or is it going to yeah. be, yeah, I mean, I want to know what happened. I want to know in detail what happened and, you know, was there a cover up, you know, from the, from Hillary Clinton and, uh, there all was. that stuff. No, I bet there was. So she's going to talk about all that. Yeah. She'll talk about all that. She's got, uh, she's got a book out called put some ice on that. Wow. Um, that's what Bill told her after he raped her and he bit her lip and she was bleeding down her face. Um, Bill put some Clinton. ice on that. Yeah, he got up and zipped his fan- pants and looked at her and said, yeah, uh, I guess you need to put some ice on that. Jesus. <laughs> oh, these are our leaders, man. We got guys like you know Slick Willie in there, raping and biting women and getting away with it. And uh, I don't know, man. It's just crazy, you know, all the stuff we see. But that's going to be just an awesome, awesome interview. And, uh, man, I've good been for you. Dealing. I've What's been that? dealing with my good buddy. You know, I've had him on the show. You were in there the last time I had him right. on the show, uh, John Merrill. Yeah, tell us a little bit about him. Uh, John Merrill is a good friend, been a good friend of mine since November of 2020. They came out with a story that John Merrill had an affair. 
I knew that John Merrill had an affair November the 15th of 2020. His wife knew that he had an affair in October of 2020. They worked through it, they got over it, and they came out with a political hit job yesterday, or the day before yesterday, sorry. Uh, come out with a political hit job on John, talking about, oh, he likes stuff up his ass and stuff like that. <laughs> well, it turns out that if you actually listen to their interview, if you actually listen to what she actually said, yeah, she said none of that was true, and they were making that up, so they d- d- blatantly committed defamation of character. Of course. I mean, they, they do that shit all the time. You know they do. They're, they're out there looking to destroy people's names, and it's just disgusting that they are they, they can get away with it. And that's, I mean, but they, they have all the power right now. They can do whatever the hell they want in this country right now. It's just Yeah, not, yeah but know? today, just a while ago, just a, just a few minutes ago, maybe 30, 40 minutes ago, I posted the exclusive. I have found out who leaked this woman's information to that website, that right-wing nutjob website. Um, I found out who they released that information to. And I found out who released her information. And I just put it out there not too long ago. It is disgraced former... Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, Roy Moore. No way. Is it yes. Holy yes. Shit. And and the reason he did it is because he has had a problem with John. John voted for Roy Moore when he ran against Doug Jones. Um, I'm not proud to say this. I voted for Roy Moore when he ran against Doug Jones. Um, hey, hold on one sec, Cummings. Just hold on one minute. Snow Pro, I get to recognize you coming into the room. How you doing, brother? I've been thinking about you a lot. Hopefully everything's going well. Hope you're doing well. If you want to call in, buddy, join us. Really good to see you in here. I hope everything's uh, going well and happening for you, brother. All right? Good to see you. So go ahead. But, yeah, Roy Moore was accused of, you know, I mean, everybody knows, I guess, the, the liking underage women. Mm. And uh, he was accused of uh, a lot of things. And it's like I told uh, the goof Stu Peters, who was, acting like he was some big hero and thought this would put a feather in his cap and he'd get to meet Donald Trump. <laughs> um, I told him, don't throw stones when you live in a glass house. Now the liberal media, I've talked to two people who are a part of a, of a big news organization in Alabama. I revealed this to them. They called, they verified my source, which is my source, and I'm not going to say who my source is, but they verified that what I was telling was true, and the liberal media is about to destroy the Moore campaign. They're about to destroy anybody who is involved with this because now, instead of instead of it looking bad on John, John's gonna walk out of this thing smelling like a rose, man. Well, I'll tell you, man, that that, that is more what, power to him. That is what the liberal media, the liberal media, and the liberals do, and that's one area the Republicans do not win this battle. The liberal left go out to destroy their enemies. They are relentless. They don't look back. They do whatever they need to destroy the competition and destroy anyone that opposes them. And that is one area where the Republicans, I think, fall short a lot of times. Republicans, we eat each other up. We do. We do. Absolutely, we do. And, uh, hey, Snowpro, good to see you. I see you you wrote back. We're going to have to get together up in Maine, dude. I'm doing my guys weekend, the third weekend in Maine. So I'll be crossing through the state. Maybe you and I can meet up for a beer at that point. So we'll have to text and kind of get that uh, kind of going. But, hey, Cummings, now that you're in here, and Eric, too, you know, I'm obviously a little bit behind with some things going on. Now, you guys all know, and I can't talk about this too much, but I'm a huge, huge baseball fan and, you know, love the Red Sox. I actually went to a Red Sox game this past week. You know, they had all the COVID procedures in, you know, in place. They only allowed 5,000 fans in Fenway Park, and I get amazing seats. Now, I don't know what. Your ballpark seats cost for all you guys, but seats in Boston are very expensive. So I got like Loge 127, which were directly by, behind home plate. We got four seats for $57 a piece. That is an absolute steal at Fenway Park. Generally, those seats are probably 150, 200 bucks each. So we got great seats. We had no one around us, easy drive in, but you had to have your mask on. So literally by the fourth inning, you had at least 50% of the fans at Fenway Park with their masks completely off. Nobody had them on. I took mine off, and you know people were just refusing to put their masks on. They had one little security guard who was going around you know, trying to enforce the whole mask policy, and nobody was listening to her. 
And I got to say, they did a pretty classy job of it. I mean, they weren't really, you know, be- trying to bury people into wearing the masks. But you saw a lot of people who were just not wearing them. And I, I agree. I mean, you're outside of the ball game. You don't need to be wearing a mask. But the area where I'm upset, and I imagine for you, Eric, this probably uh, hurts a little bit, you know, them moving the All-Star game out of Atlanta to Colorado. Well, well I'm, I, I, in case you missed this, um Major League Baseball's come up with a new Major League Baseball logo instead of MLB. It's BLM, and and Chris from the Forgotten Tunes alerted us to this one. Well, I'll tell you right now, dude. If you if you're on the Mass Pike, the Massachusetts Turnpike is the the main highway that connects where I live into Boston. Mm-hmm. So you literally, hop on this highway, you drive direct to Boston, and when you go on this highway, you literally drive right next to Fenway Park. You see the green monster from the highway. It's very close. So. On the side of the green monster, on the back side of it, there's a giant banner of BLM. And then they have one in the stadium as well. And like I've said over and over again, Black Lives Matter, obviously. I mean, to me, it's it's absolutely ridiculous when people try to say that, you know, any race doesn't matter. I believe all races matter. Black lives matter. White lives matter. Hispanic lives matter. On and on and on. But when I see major league baseball advertising a militant group and that's kind of what i think it is in some ways i don't quite understand that i mean i do agree with the basic cause of being able to help you know black people i guess achieve equality and not being targeted not being profiled i mean i'm all i'm down with all of that and i agree with it but for me black lives matter is more of a militant group and it's certainly being Chris. major league baseball right now which is kind of sad so um for me, you know, I, I, I don't get, though. I don't get what they did. I mean, they, they moved the ball game from Atlanta. They're sending it to Coors Field in Denver, and I've been, I've been to both fields. Coors Field is a beautiful ballpark. But how are you punishing, you know, the, the I guess, <laughs> the powers that be when you're taking a ball game from a city where you have a 51% African-American community and you're sending the ball game to a city where you have a 9% African-American community? You know, percentage. So think of all the African American gentlemen, women, children, whatever that would have had jobs related to this game. It would have made money because of this game being in the Atlanta area. You've now taken that game and you've sent it to Denver, where you only have nine percent African Americans. So you're punishing the city for this supposed racist voting system, which it's not racist, racist at all. And you're punishing the the system in the state by moving the ball game to a place that has very few African-Americans and they're not going to benefit from the money coming into that particular city to help the people. I I just don't understand the thought processes behind it. I mean, am I crazy guys or is this just come completely off the mark crooked? You know, it's because they don't want anything in the South, John. It's got absolutely Mm -hmm. nothing to do with black lives matter. And it's got absolutely nothing to do with voter ID. It's got no, because Colorado has voter ID. Um, it's got. It's, 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 it's more strict, isn't it? It's more strict than Georgia's policy, correct? Yeah, Georgia has uh, absentee, no reason whatsoever. You, whatever your reason is, you can vote absentee. Uh, Colorado's is you must have a reason to vote absentee. Uh, you have must have a reason uh, for mail-in voting. Georgia, you don't even have to have a reason for mail-in voting. Uh, you just have to have that policy. But hey, man, I got to run. But if you look into right, this, brother. if you look into this too. Um, if you look into the fact of they even want Space Force moved out of Alabama, they want it in Colorado. What's going on in Colorado? Look into the Denver impo- airport. Look what's under the Denver airport. It's something more sinister, people. It's crazy, man. I mean, the, the stuff that's going on in this country right now is stuff like I've never seen before. And it's just scary. It's scary stuff. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. Hey, Eric, I was looking also. I'm kind of, Let me fl- flip ahead my phone here. Obviously, I'm looking at the Daily News. Uh, you see Prince Philip died. I mean, again, I don't know why yes. in this country we have such a fascination with the royal family. I mean, I could care less, honestly. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm sad that he died. Well, um, I like the way Jeremy says the, says about the royal family that they're just glorified welfare recipients is what they are. But <laughs> It's true. It's true. They live but, all- um, but, but with Prince Philip's home. passing today, you know, God rest his soul. Yeah, no, I feel bad. I mean, it's a shame that he passed away, but I mean, he was 99 years old. Well, and, and we knew he'd been sick for quite some time, too. Right. And I mean, again, he's lived a good life and, you know, whatever. But I, I don't understand why this. But, uh, of- but, but, but I think the only stains on the royal family is, you know, Harry and, and Meg, Megan, you know, not not being active participants like they used to be. And then and then Prince Andrew getting caught up in the Jeff- Jeffrey Epstein scandal and. 
But, you know, you've had other notable scandals in the past, like, um, I think Prince Edward marrying American divorcee Wallace Simpson. That was a big scandal decades ago. No, it's true. And now, did you see, by any chance, I'm trying to look this up right now. Did you see, you know, Prince Harry, people have said for years, you know, he's Prince Charles's son. But have you looked up, have you done any of the research? Many people swear James Hewitt is the father. If you look at the pictures, have you seen the two of them side by side? If you haven't done it, Google Prince Harry and look at James Hewitt. Look at the two of them. They both have red hair. They both Mm -hmm. look exactly the same. There is no doubt in my mind that Prince Harry is James Hewitt's son. He is not Prince Charles. Um, Long before, you know, like Ronan Farrow, there was Prince Harry. Um, But I guess if but I guess if, if Princess Diana was still alive and, and Maureen Orth asked the same question she asked me of Pharaoh, I wonder if Princess Diana's question would have been possibly. And then you'd have members of the royal family just swearing like Nancy Sinatra nonsense. Right. Absolutely true. So I don't know. Yeah, because, so- because that was when Maureen Orth asked me of Pharaoh about Ronan being like Frank Sinatra's son and not Woody Allen's. And she gave the answer of possibly. <laughs> because I, I think if you look at pictures of, Ronan Farrow and Frank Sinatra, you, you, you could really see the striking resemblance, but at the same time, R- Ronan does you know, favor his mom a lot, but I just don't see any Woody Allen in, in Ronan whatsoever. Yeah, see, I know that my kids all look like me. I mean, I was lucky to find one person to have sex with me, so that was a good thing where I finally found somebody that was willing. So, I, And it's funny. My wife and I talk about that. When, when we fight sometimes, which we do fight like all married couples, we'll both say, you know what? We could get divorced, but we're both too lazy to get back out there and start dating again. So it's probably easier just to patch it up and not argue anymore. So we end up getting past our fights when we have good ones and uh, don't get on that road of you know, divorce and those type of things. But in Eric, I was looking at this story also. I want to talk about this one. This one drives me crazy. And I'm sure, you know, for the people out there, for those of you that heard my last show, number 233, I was talking about how I was out walking in the inner city of Worcester, Massachusetts, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And my son works out at a gym and I leave that area and I go walk around these department stores, which is a relatively safe place to walk. And one of the things that's really been bothering me are the number of homeless people that are living on the streets, sleeping behind dumpsters. And most of them, from what I can see, have mental illness where you know they're talking to themselves. They're probably schizophrenic. Some might be autistic. You know, I don't know what the problems are, but it's really been weighing on me and really been bothering me to see all these people that have been struggling with mental health and are, and are homeless and are really struggling. So now when I look at places like Oakland, California, and now New York city, I love that finally the house GLP wants Biden to review the $2 billion funding. That's going to go to New York city for illegal immigrants. And he, and they're saying put American families first. So basically the fund is going to provide illegal aliens who lost their jobs because of the pandemic up to $15,600, $15,600 to people who are not legally in this country. And again, not, not only does that bother me, and you can argue all day long about, you know, do we have a system that works? Do they have a real chance to get into this country? Is there a path to citizenship? Those things could probably all be better. But the bottom line is the system is what the system is right now. And why is my tax money going to pay for people who are in this country illegally? They are in exactly. this country illegally. $15,600 to people who are in Thank this you. country Thank illegally. It's not right. It's not right. And then when I think about that fact, coupled with the fact where I'm going on these walks in this inner city and I'm seeing all these Americans, some of them I'm sure are veterans who are living behind bridges, living behind dumpsters. There's one particular place where there's like this little alcove behind a, an abandoned restaurant that's been abandoned forever. And I looked into this little alcove and there was no one in there at this point, but there was just newspapers and cardboard. And you know, you could tell that they had like a tarp in there. So, you know, if it was snowing in the middle of winter, this person would just pull the tarp over themselves while they slept in this area. Now, you know, in this country, if if we're spending fifteen thousand six hundred dollars per family for illegal aliens or illegal immigrants, 
What are we doing for the people that are living on the streets in this country right now? I mean, we have tent cities in Los Angeles. We have tent cities in D.C. We have tent cities popping up all over the country where people are literally living in the streets and living in tents. These are American citizens. The illegal aliens that came over from Mexico, Biden's obviously letting them flow into the country, right? He's letting them flow in. They are displacing homeless legitimate americans from shelters and moving in illegals into these shelters what the hell is going on in this country i mean eric I, am, I, am i nuts i mean I, I don't know if i'm just not thinking right i about mean this. It, it just sounds to me like a lot of like a lot of politicians just have their priorities in the wrong order the priority should be america first not america last <laughs> And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And I just want to say hello to everybody coming in. Chris, I saw you come in a little while hey, ago. Cena, Mixon, uh, the dude, Sean, Tina, Cena, DJ Lashes. Thanks for coming in, everybody. I really appreciate it. But, no, that, that's exactly how I feel, too. I mean, again, by saying that it's America first is not a bad thing. Now, think about your own life, all right? Think about my life, your life, everybody's life. Until we are all confident and happy with who we are as a person or as people, we can't really contribute in a positive way to society. I mean, for me, if I'm broken on the inside and I don't have confidence and I'm angry about my childhood and I'm, you know, I, I had bad relationships and I feel like the, the world has screwed me over and I'm feeling negative about myself, I can't be positive for anybody else. And as a country, I think we have that same problem where we are not taking care of our own first. I think we meet, we need to be able to take care of the American citizens. There should not be people living in the streets like we have it. Now, again, I'm a, I'm a, I guess you could say I'm a right winger. I'm a capitalist, right? I'm someone that believes um, you're, you're basically a realist is what you are. I, I'm, I'm a realist, but again, I vote, I voted for Trump. I'm more of a Republican than a Democrat. If there was a great Democrat, I would vote that way because I am a registered independent, but, from my perspective, I mean, man, I don't want to see homeless people on the streets. I want a healthy planet. I want all those things just like the left wants. But why isn't someone stepping up to do something? I mean, how can you live in a state like you look at California? It's you know one of the, the biggest left wing states in the country and whatever. I live in probably number two, Massachusetts. How can you have tent cities all over the place in that state and not? be putting money into getting these people off the street? Why can't we take the billions of dollars we sent overseas to Pakistan, to the museums, to these different places and build housing, get proper mental health services in place for these poor people instead of sending money you know, to, to these crazy places overseas? Now, again, I get that there's a lot of need in the world, and it breaks my heart to see it. It really does. I, I'm not cold. I'm not a cold person that sees things that says, well, you know, the hell with them. You know, they're, they're in Mexico. They're struggling. I don't care about those people. That's not the case. But in this country also, we can't let everybody in because we as a country can't handle the influx of people that are coming in. We have enough problems with the people we have. So, I, you know, I don't know. There are so many things in this country that just drive me crazy. And I would love to see our, our, our government and our country stand up and help our own people and get them on their feet. And again, if we want to let people into this country and right now there's not like a legitimate path to citizenship, let's change it. Let's change the way we're allowing people in right now. And don't take, don't make it take 12 years. Have a have a system where you can let in a certain number of people every year. You can give you you can become a citizen within like two years. Make it quick, so people don't have to storm the border and doing the things that they're doing you know, to get in this country. So, I don't know, man. I'm <laughs> kind of ranting a little bit right now, but these things just bother me. You know, it bothers me. And now, did you see Eric? I don't know if this is taking root. I saw this on the news yesterday. There was talk now that Joe Biden might be starting construction back up on the wall again. Did you see that? That doesn't surprise me, um, which um, we, we need the border wall more than we need the wall and fence being built around the U.S. Capitol. Right. I see dude Sean's comment. I always thought those mega churches could house the, you know, that's a good point, Sean. You know, I, I was, it was funny last night. I was reading about Joel Osteen last night, that pastor from Houston, who I actually really like. You know, I actually watch him when he's on. I listen to his serious XM radio station sometimes. I view him as more of like a motivational speaker than actually, you know, a religious person. But he had that big uh, dome stadium. And I know he took a lot of heat during one of the, I think it was one of the hurricanes where he didn't open his doors to the people who are out in the streets. But you're right. I mean, yeah. there, there are churches 
there are so many different ways where we should be helping these people. And it honestly breaks my heart to see these people living outdoors. And again, I, I live in a very cold climate in Massachusetts. It's brutal here in the wintertime. You know, I can't imagine these poor people survive in that weather, you know, and we're not doing anything I mean, to help. Them. Go ahead. You know, you know, like for like Joel Osteen to, to be a pastor and to own a, a like a me- mega church and, you know, real churches would, would help people in need. Um, but, but for, but for s- somebody like Joel Osteen, who has name recognition and, you know, and has made m- millions off of his ministry, um, and, and he's just going to turn his back on people who are in need, that, that would just suggest to me that he's a fraud. Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, the, the way I look at Joel Osteen, is, and what I did last night was, if you've never done it, Google Joel Osteen's home. Hey, <laughs> Holy crap, is it huge? It's in Texas. His house is gigantic in Texas. Huge, huge house. But for me, hey, what's up, world? I never understood, like, the Catholic Church requiring their priests and sisters and nuns and whoever, the brothers, to live in poverty. Now, for me, I, I don't understand how living in poverty makes you a better person. For me, I really don't have a problem with Joel Osteen making money. I mean, he makes a lot of money. You know, I'd like to see him give some of it to charity, but, I mean, that's his decision, what he does with his money. But, I mean, honestly, when I when I watch him on television right. and I listen to his uh, his broadcast, he gives me things I can use. Like, you know, if I'm having a problem, I listen to him. I'm like, man, he's right on. You know, he is really good at what he does. And I don't have a problem with him making money. But, you know, the, the Catholic Church, they, they demand that people, you know, that the priests have poverty, but they have nothing. And you look at what, you know, what happened in the Catholic Church. I mean, I was a Catholic my entire life. And you look at you know what happened with the sex abuse scandal. I mean, it was awful. And for me, it's it's impossible for me to go back to the Catholic Church and even donate money to it after seeing what happened in that church and how many children were affected. You know, I, I just no, can't and um, and that, you know? and then of course, the, like the the le- leaders in 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 the Catholic Church just looking the other way, like they did that that knew it was going on. Well, they did, and I mean, I've told the story a bunch of times here. I saw it happen at my high school. I saw it happen right in front of me. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I, for the people that are new in here, I'll make it very quick. I was having trouble in an advanced math class. I was I was going to drop the class. They convinced me to go in to a, like a tutoring class with two other kids who were struggling. And if I couldn't catch up, they would let me drop it. I was like, okay, that works. So they brought in this old brother. And if you're not familiar with the Catholic religion, you have fathers, which are priests. And then you have brothers also that are part of the Catholic religion, kind of like a sister that would be a nun. So they brought in this old man. He was probably in his eighties and he was tutoring the three of us, had us up on the board doing our stuff. Hey, thanks for coming to DJ. But he was doing, you know, doing his stuff and he was a really good teacher. But then one of the, the other kid in the classroom started telling me and the other football player that he was touching him inappropriately. So finally, you know, we ended up seeing it happen. Like the brother right in front of us was reaching down between the kid's legs and rubbing his crotch in the classroom. And the, the kid was like protesting and trying to get him to stop. So we went down to the principal's office and we told what happened. This thing was buried. They threw the brother out of the school. We never saw him again. Never was reported to the police. Hush, hush. Until 20 years later, when this kid finally came out of the newspaper and said he was molested at the school. So the school was denying it, denying it, denying it. So I actually wrote the headmaster a very private email. And I said, listen, This is who I am. This is when I graduated. These are the three people that were in this class. This was the teacher. This is who we told. And I told him exactly what happened. And I said, listen, I have nothing against the school. I'm not looking to, I don't want any money. I'm not looking to profit anything. I just wanted you to know that this in fact happened. And I was there and I saw it happen. So to their credit, he wrote me back and was very apologetic and told me, you know, he wasn't at the school at that time and it had to be horrible for everyone involved. But for me, you know, when when you see these things happen, I mean, I've got four kids and I can't trust my children with any organization that basically hid, you know, the molestation of children. And that's what happened with that organization. So I don't know. It's just crazy stuff, man. And, you know, you got to protect your kids. If if you're out there listening, you know, in life, you think you can trust people you know, with your children, but you really can't. You have to be very, very, very careful about who you trust your children with, because sometimes it's the people that are closest to you are the ones that you would never suspect that end up, you know, betraying your trust when you have children. So you need to be very, very careful in who you allow around your children and what you allow your children to do, because things do happen. And a lot of times it's people that uh, are in your life and you feel like you know them well and you can trust them when you really can't, you know? So Eric, getting back to, I want to talk about the border wall a little bit. I'm getting off topic a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so 
going back, you know, when Trump was in office, I mean, for four years, we heard that the border wall was racist. The border wall, Trump was racist. He's, he's against, you know, people from Mexico. He's against this. He's against that. The typical narrative as to what we hear where the Democrats are looking to be divisive in our country. And if you look now, you know, we've had the influx of illegals coming into the country because they know Biden will let them in. They're being bused to sanctuary cities where they'll eventually be able to vote for the Democratic Party. We all know that's the purpose behind it. But now Biden is realizing with the number of people that have come that he can't control the situation any longer. So now Biden very quietly said yep. he's now going to fund the border wall and finish the gaps in the wall. So this is the guy, this is the party, Pelosi, Biden, AOC, they called him racist. And now they're going to finish the wall. Where are the calls for Biden being a racist. It's amazing to me what a double standard well, country between the two parties. You know, I mean, I don't know, Eric. It's just crazy to me. Well, I, I, you know, that is just probably the hypocrisy, and you know, you know, at its finest. You know, dude, Sean, you're right on there, man. I see your comment. It's all for show. I'm on TikTok, and yeah, I, actually, I mean, it's all theater, and you're right. Yeah, I love TikTok now. I'm a big TikTok fan. I dump Facebook, you know, fascist book. I'm off that now, but for TikTok. I had a video of AOC, her big performance that she put on a couple of years ago, you know, when she was at the border with her hands on the fence and she was crying at the treatment she saw of the children who were being ripped out of their parents' arms at the border. And where has she been? How come she hasn't been down, you know, with those photo no trouble. crying at the border? Oh, and he's under his real name. Now, is this the real homeboy? Is this the Bye. real homeboy? Is homeboy in the house? I will find out that he's uh, acknowledged himself in the chat. <laughs> well, really good to see you, brother. And well, I'll be in touch with you. And hopefully maybe that weekend, that third weekend in July, you and I can get together for a beer on my travels up to Rangeley, Maine when I head up. So I'll be texting you soon and we'll hopefully get together, brother. All right. So it was good to see you. I'm glad you came in. Really good to see you again. So, Eric, what have you been up to, man? What do you, what do you get going on this weekend? It's Friday. Well, I am, uh, of course, house, house sitting and pet sitting until Sunday. I mean, I would have. I would have been going home today, but um, I got extended two more days because my brother and sister-in-law and their kids are down in Daytona. Um, mm -hmm. And so you, um, you got the run of their house then. How's that been so far? The, I think two chihuahuas, um, a beta fish, and a bearded dragon. Oh, wow, so you're taking care of the pets. Now, is this the house that has the chickens, or is that your – whose house? Who oh, that, that's my dad and stepmother's house. Okay, okay. I remember you have chickens also. Well, they, they have meals too. <laughs> That's amazing. Did you see and I think she also there? found an exotic swan that she rescued off the side of the road that looked like it had been abandoned. That's amazing. Now, did you see the picture I posted on Twitter this morning? I was coming in from doing something this morning. I pulled into my driveway uh -huh. in my car. And as I managed, mentioned, we're renovating our bathrooms. So we used to have like an old clawfoot tub, one of those old style tubs in our house that was put in the house by the people that built this house. We never even used the damn thing. It just sat there for like 15 years. And I guess the, the family that put it in here spent like 2500 bucks on this tub. It's a really nice tub. So we had it taken out. We're putting a shower that our kids are actually going to be able to use in the bathroom. So the contractor put it in my backyard. So I pull into my car, and I see this old clawfoot tub in my backyard. And directly behind it in the backdrop is a chicken coop. And I'm like, look at this, man. I took a picture of it, and I put it on Instagram and Twitter. And I'm like, this right here is a perfect example of what a hillbilly's backyard looks like, right? You get the tub in the yard with the chicken coop behind it, man. And I didn't realize, man, I used to live in Boston. And I've, I've completely gone redneck hillbilly living now in the, out in the woods in central Massachusetts. So kind of funny. Uh, let's see. Oh, homeboy's calling in. Let's take this, Eric. Let's get him in here. Good idea. See how he's doing. See, I see the dude, Sean. I would miss the schools. I'm going to take over your show. I'm Please do. <laughs> how you doing, brother? Good to hear from you. How are you? No, this is how Eric uh, thinks. I don't know. When I, whenever I enter a room and Eric's here, he goes, uh-oh. Oh, no. So I want to come in like the um, devil. We never know what we're going to get with you, homeboy. Well, see, the thing of it is, though, I don't understand. I hear all the time that Homeboy gets banned from shows. He gets in trouble. I love it when Homeboy comes in. He's got a free ticket anytime he wants to call into this show. And what the hell's wrong with people? You're great when you come in. I love having you in the show. You're living things up for me. Yeah, man. I, I don't I don't get it either. I got a bad reputation. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, like, the OG, OG live crowd didn't you know, have that on-again, off-again feud with you. 
Oh, let's not talk about that. Oh boy. What well, but um, no, it's, it's, but but I think Devito and Old Man and Slightly and and Lady Me seem to to have a good rapport with you. Um, yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I'll say this. Um, it was like a mafia meeting. I actually sat down with a bunch of them, like six or seven of them. They told me their gripe. Right. We sat down, and we squashed everything. So it's all, all right. good now. All it's right. all good now. That's good. I'm going to say, you know, for the people that for the people that have trouble with homeboy, I mean, my, my yeah. advice is get the stick out of your ass. That's all I'm saying. You know, I, that's I, all I'm saying, man. I, listen, I talked my way out of a hundred uh, uh, a ticket when I was going 103 miles an hour. Um, well, not out of it completely, but I, I could have got screwed, like impounded. I could have got my license taken away for a bit, and that would have been bad, uh, John DeVito. California's tough, man. They don't screw around with tickets out there. I remember they don't. I was out in LA, I don't know, a while back, and oh. um, I didn't have my seatbelt on. And in Massachusetts, the cops can't pull you over for just not having your seatbelt on. They have to have another reason to pull you over. Man, I had this this chip come up next to me, looked right at me, saw no seatbelt, flashed those lights on, and pulled me right over. And luckily, I was like, he's like, do you know why I pulled you over? I'm like, no, I mean, I'm from Massachusetts. What was I doing wrong? Because I wasn't speeding. He goes, you didn't have your seatbelt well, on. I'm like, oh, you get pulled over for here for that? And he let me off. Yeah. But man, he bagged me right away. Well, for that. well, here's what here's what I did. It was when I first got my Challenger, and I wanted to test it out. He pulls me over. By the way, the guy was going 110 to catch me, John <laughs> Davido, or more faster. So, anyways, and it was like an early day. Nobody was on the road. Right. Um. He comes up, and I go. I was very polite, and I said, "You know what, officer? I'm not gonna lie to you. I just got this car. I wanted <laughs> to see what it could do. I opened it up on the road." I'm sorry, but, you know, that's what I did. He's like, you know what? I like your honesty. I'm going to knock it down to 85 miles an hour. <laughs> that's the way to do it, man. I'll tell you, <laughs> I've given people the advice before. When I was young and stupid, I would, you know, you get pulled over and you're like, oh, fuck, you know, you're all pissed off. Right. As soon as the cop sees that, you get the ticket. For me, you know, I, I, I keep the hands on the steering wheel. When the cop comes up, you know, I roll the window down. You know, do you know why I pulled you over? I'm like, oh, you know, I, I don't, officer. What was that? You and you were speeding. Oh, I was. I wasn't looking down. I'm really sorry. Thank you for keeping, you know, the highway safe. I appreciate it. Here's my license and registration. If you treat them with respect, eight times out of 10, they're either going to knock it down or not give you a ticket. If you come off like an asshole, that's when you end up on the ground getting beaten with a club you know, when you start going that yeah. route. My, my car attracts a lot of attention. Yeah. So it's um i got pulled over that was like uh, three or four years ago where i got the 100 100 miles an hour nice. recently i wasn't even going that fast and the, and the cop pulls me over man i mean everybody was i was going the damn uh what do you call it the, the flow of traffic and i get pulled That's... over and the guy mm -hmm. comes up to me and i talk my way completely out of that one Hey, Freedom Warrior, I got a story for you in a second. It's pretty funny. But I want to ask you first, homeboy, how do you like the Challenger? Those are pretty sweet cars. I like those. How are you liking it? Oh, man, come on. I love it, man. Beautiful car. Yeah. My sister-in-law drives a Mustang. Nice. It's Everything's black. It's like there's not one thing that's not black. The rims are black. The gas cap's nice. black. So I got the, I mean, my black leather seats. So oh. That's what I got. I got an old Corvette, a 2004 convertible. Mm -hmm. The whole thing's black. The seats are black. Everything. Same thing. I love it. Love the, the car. The thing is that it gets dirty right away. Right? It does. It does. It looks like glass. When you clean it, it looks awesome. Yep. But then, like, uh, you have to wash it. Like, not all the time. I got sick of it, but. I know. Man, or keep it in the yesterday. Garage. It's already dirty. All right. Freedom <laughs> Warrior. I can't this story. Homeboy, you'll like this also. I don't know if anybody watches the TV show Shameless. We're just catching up with the last season right now. And uh -huh. the, the youngest son in Shameless is a cop. Okay. And they were involved, like, in this. They, they went up to this house, and the people in the house started shooting. So they called the uh -huh. SWAT team, right? So all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this is, you know, Chicago. One guy shows up with the SWAT uniform on. It's a SWAT right across the park. So the cop looks at him and goes, what are you doing, man? Where's the, where's the SWAT team? We called for the SWAT team. He goes, I am the SWAT team now. They defunded the rest of the SWAT team. So the SWAT team was like one oh, guy. All they have left. <laughs> this, this is the it's new so episode? Funny. It was yeah they, they, the last the last season it was one of the episodes oh. it was funny. there's literally one guy there with SWAT and the full gear on he's oh, like yeah I'm the guy left it defunded the rest of them <laughs> there, no, okay I got you it was funny as hell funny as hell so what you been up to? what else is going on in your life you out there working right now or are you off today 
I am, and I'm actually uh, somewhere different today. I was supposed to have it off, but of, of course, no. Yeah. They needed some help. So what am I going to do? And I said, you know what? Let me see who's on. John DeVito's on. I said, you know what? Let me call mm-hmm. him. <laughs> no, because you're like, on. hey. Oh, wow. you know, I haven't been on for over a week. This? I called him because Eric goes, "Uh oh, here comes trouble." <laughs> well, like, well, like I said, homeboy, we never know what we're gonna get with you. Oh. Um, are you gonna be Elgato? Oh, are you gonna be Homeboy Rogers? Are you gonna be Mr. Crow? Are you gonna be Michael Jackson or Pee Wee Herman? We we never know. I think I you will be Tyson one. also, right? You come in as Tyson as well. Yeah, or Tyson or Tony Montana. Ooh, I like I'm Tony the man Montana. Of a, I call myself the man of a million voices, which is. Obviously not true because that'd be a lot of voices. But um, <laughs> those are the voices I hear in my head. The, uh, I, got, I, got, voices I, got, in my head. I got a new one. All right, let's hear it. What do you got? Bring it. It's a, it's a different variation. It's called Angry Michael. All right, let's let's hear it. Oh. When you first start sound like this, you're beautiful. You're wonderful, right? <laughs> Shimona, I love you, Eric. You're my favorite. But then if you piss him off, <laughs> go fuck yourself. Fuck. You know. So that's angry, angry Michael Jackson. Well, yeah, it's better because on another show they hang up on me, and when they're hanging up with the countdown, he goes nuts. <laughs> now I was reading something the other day where people are saying that they believe Michael Jackson's still alive. One of the conspiracy theories. They're saying that when you know when they found him supposedly dead, they took him off in the meat wagon, brought him to the coroner. And they said that there was press members there that actually got a video with the doors closed of someone mm-hmm. stepping out of the back of the wagon. And they said that they believe he just started a new life, new identity. But again, I mean, where, where can Michael Jackson go on the planet? I mean, you could put him in the middle of Zaire or you know, the Congo and out in the middle of like nowhere. People are going to know who Michael Jackson is. I mean, he was the most widely recognized person on the planet. I'm not sure where right. he died without knowing who he, who he is. So I'm not buying the whole conspiracy thing that he's still alive. But but, I mean, he was no, a creepy a, guy, man. He was as a an artist, I, as an artist, he's great. But as a human being, I, I can give a fuck. You're probably right, John. I agree. Yeah. There's always been the conspiracy theory that um, R- R- Phoenix, um, you know, didn't die either, and that there have even been conspiracies to float around that that um, the, that R- River Phoenix could be um, could actually be, of course, Mark Dice. But Mark Dice refutes those claims. No, they're dead, Eric. I'll tell you, the, the guy, the guy that I almost got, and I was hoping I'd get him, and then he decided. And no. then there's also a conspiracy that Andy Kaufman faked his death. Oh, well, he might have. Who knows? But dude, I was writing back and forth with Corey Feldman. I he, he was texting back and forth with me, and I almost had him agreed to come onto the show because I wanted to hear him talk about, you know, the whole thing that happened with Corey Haim. How he says Corey Haim was basically a molested co op. Yeah, and, yo, uh, unless lawyers advised yeah. him not to. Well, mm-hmm. he's, got that, he's got like a documentary out, and I, he's a really good guy. He and I were doing private messages on Twitter. You know, we were talking about his movies. I was telling him some of my favorites. You know, cool guy, but he just said, yeah, I'm done doing interviews about it. I don't want to do it anymore. Uh, and can he I call in if he calls in? Because I'm going to tell him, I'm going to pitch him Goonies too. It's my own script. I wrote it. They might have. See, he starts talking to Michael Jackson, Hello? and they cut him off. Look at that. Look at that, man. Oh, we got the dude Sean calling in. We'll take it. Oh, it's on. Oh, I, I hear the little beeping in the background where he's well, here, scanning here. stuff. I, don't know what, I have no clue what Sean. happened right now. Dude, Sean, I was trying to hit the button. It would not let me connect you. Try again. Try to call in again. My try again, button. Sean. Yeah, try to call in again, Sean. I was hitting the button. And it would not work. I don't know, I don't know if oh, I'm here? Oh, you're back, huh? Well, the dude, Sean, what? was trying to call in, and I couldn't hit the button and get him in. I don't know what happened. Well, but that if was you want to try again, go ahead. Um. <laughs> No, I was going to say, I'm going to pitch Corey Feldman my Goonies 2 movie. Check it out. So, <laughs> so they grow up and they have kids, right? The yeah. Goonies, right? And then, like, um, they all have, like, a get-together, whatever. And the kids find the treasure map in the attic, hidden away, right? Yeah. And so they're like, well, let's go find this shit. And so they go look for it, but they get in trouble and captured. So the old Goonies have to go rescue the new Goonies and the hilarity ensues because now they're fat, old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hello. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm still here. Okay, I know. I don't know Did where John went. Pitch? 
oh, my pitch is that, that the old goonies have to go rescue the new goonies. And, yo. And homeboy, you're both here. I guess Podbean's yeah. having some technical difficulties. I can't hear either one of you. Oh, you're back. Okay, we, you both disappeared from my screen. Oh, so my goodness. Some glitches with Podbean or whatever. What the hell is eh, going who on? Knows? <laughs> who knows? So, what, so what else is going on with you, Eric? You and I talked a little bit. Yeah, it's like both you guys disappeared. You were both muted. I don't know what happened. They wouldn't let me accept Sean when he called, tried to call in. I don't know. It's Michael Jackson, man. He's after us. <laughs> yeah. Well, Honestly, this but, is the weirdest thing right here. This oh, is man. weird. I don't know. So, uh, so what else is going with you, Eric? I, uh, no. um, probably on, not too much planned for today. Um, but um, but I, I know I'll, I'll probably be visiting the other pod- podcast shows later, and I'm sure. Homeboy will probably, you know, you know, at 3 p.m. Eastern, he'll probably he'll be hanging out with Frankie D over at Frankie D's crib. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I was in Frankie D's crib last the- week, and I broke my AirPods, so I can't call in. But show he gets mad at me. He wants me to call in, and I literally don't have AirPods. So I uh-huh. got to get some new ones so I can call in and uh, when I get into a show. But anyway, listen, Eric, I'm, I get some stuff I got to do today, so I'm going to probably wrap this up. Why don't you run off some of the shows that are coming well, up, and um, we'll put a well, I know Homeboy will probably um, do an impromptu show later this weekend. Um, so, um, <laughs> but hey, he can always, um, you know, s- s- sing the bus song for us if um, if, if, if he's interested. Um, right now? Who's in here? I need a third person. Um, do you want? You, you could choose either Dude Sean. You could choose Jess Duck. You could choose Mister A, or you could choose Freedom Warrior. Um, no, I'm going to do Mister A because you know what that guy. Or Tron Cat. Right I'm gonna use. Whoa, damn! Ooh, now it's a toss. Tough news for me. All good. <laughs> All good um, or, or maybe you could do four. Oh my god, that that's I don't know how that would work, but uh, or like like you you'd probably be like goodbye Eric, goodbye Mr. A and Tron Cat, goodbye John. Okay, can I? All right, all right, here we go. And people don't hate me. Goodbye, Mr. Ray. Goodbye, Tron Cat. Goodbye, John DeVito. We're glad you rode on the bus with us. See ya. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yep. You're a talented man. See you later, homeboy. Man. Take care, old boy. All right, Eric, watch. Well, coming up on Podbean Live today at 3 p.m. Eastern, you've got Frankie D's Crib. Um, 7 p.m. Eastern time, you have um, Cummings' is Culture. Um, and then on the pod being Friday primetime schedule, you'll have like Chuck and Billy's Not Your Cup of Tea or Chris Unplugged with Two Peas in a Podcast or Mysteries of the Paranormal with David. Um, and of course, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, you've got the Slightly Serious Show. And since we couldn't do trivia on Tuesday night, we'll probably be doing trivia the final half hour of the show. Um, then the old man's doing his Friday night music show at 11 p.m. Eastern. And, and I imagine Chris may wind up doing the Forgotten Tune show around 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time tonight. And then over the weekend, you've got um, Lyrical Laxatives, The Turfy Show, the It's Doomsday podcast, and may- maybe our friend Jimmy might s- surprise all of us with um, an impromptu um, pirate radio podcast if if he's listening to this published episode, because I know I'm sure we'd all love to hear from him. And then Sunday night, Dennis Lee has Tall Tales in the Rabbit Hole around 9.30 p.m. Eastern. That's followed by Trice Talk at 11 p.m. Eastern. Um, ho- hopefully, Ralph will be back with new shows again very, very soon, weekdays at 6 a.m. and Hopefully he's got that new season of Sex Talk Virgineers coming soon. Um, Chit chat with the old man weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, and of course, shout outs to Sean. people like, what's that? Yeah, take a look at the dude Sean down there. He, he's um, going go to go live Sean, I think, show, and he's going to get a ton of new weed yeah. supplies to review. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm a weed guy, so that's cool. We'll tune into that. Oh, d- yeah, cool. definitely check out dude Sean and. Um, and shout outs to Pink Squirrel and Lara and Lady Me and, and Lou and and a, and a couple other podcast friends that come on at impromptu times, even Milk Dog and and hopefully Robert, you know, will, will be coming back soon with new episodes of the Mr. Clean Show. Um, and also shout outs to podcast friends who um, have been MIA for a while, like like our friends at The Raw Report and all, the Almost Everything podcast and the Just Another Day in Paradise. And also shout out to Link Lingalonga and in hopes that we might be seeing, you know, seeing more shows up from him over the weekend. And also shout outs to um, YouTube friends, cracks and Roxanne and, you know, and, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll have some new get to know your podcast or interviews lined up. 
So I want to wish everybody a very blessed weekend, and we'll talk to you again soon. Love you, and God bless. Yeah, I'm not going to end it with music today. I'm going to end it with my favorite laugh. So here it goes. We're going to have uh, our vice president uh, end the show with some laughing, and we're going <laughs> to leave it with this. So here we go. Eric, thank you for joining me. Homeboy, thank you. To all the people that came into the show, I really appreciate it, and I will see you all soon. Have a wonderful weekend. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're considered the most liberal United States senator. I, I Somebody said that, and it actually was Mike Pence on the debate stage. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah. Well, actually, the nonpartisan GovTrack has rated you as the most liberal senator. Let's talk about that. You once Come again on. gave a non-answer. Joe Biden gave a non-answer. <laughs> Trying to answer you the now. American people deserve a straight answer. And is that a socialist or progressive perspective? No. <laughs> be important if you said the truth. Joe Biden said twice in the debate last week. That you landed haymakers on Joe Biden. How do you go from being such a passionate opponent? It was a debate. <laughs> Ron Gold has said that he is for the legalization of marijuana recreationally. Your thoughts on that? That he's entitled to his opinion. <laughs> so if it was legalized all throughout the country and <laughs> medicinal, would you, you know, do it? Listen. Listen, I think that it gives a lot of people joy, and we need more <laughs> joy. All right, that's it. All right, everyone, have a great day, and we will see you soon.